Hey everyone, I wanted to take a minute and make a video of going ahead and rebuilding this distributor that I got off of that Model G up at my dad's from a couple weeks ago. If you remember correctly, it wasn't running very well. We took the cap off of this and it was full of rust. I'll show you, here's a clip of what that looked like. I just took the cap off and uh, the rotor and you can see down here, it's just a mess. There's tons of Tons of rust. It was really pretty bad on the inside, and then after I took the distributor off, I just came home, and I went to uh, spin the back side of it right here, and let me show you. This, I cannot even spin it by hand. This was so, there must be so much corrosion down inside here. Um, I, I can't even believe it. I mean, it's nearly, it's nearly seized. Just pop the cap off, and as you can see, it's still very, very rusty down in there. I'll go ahead and I'll take these points off, the condenser off, um, which actually don't look too rusty or too bad. They might still be salvageable, but uh, we'll check those, and we'll take this plate off and see. Um, down beneath this, there's the kind of like a, an advanced mechanism for the spark. We'll see how, well, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty froze up. But we'll see the condition of that and things like that. And then we'll just keep working our way down inside of this. There we go. Okay. Just as I expected. Just everything is so rusted. I have no idea how it got this bad. If you look down in there, I mean, just everything. It's like someone sprayed seawater in there and let it sit. There's just rust everywhere. I've got everything, those weights and everything pulled out of there. Now I'm just, I've got my um, flywheel puller here on the back and I'm just going to pull this uh, coupling off. Hopefully it doesn't, oh yeah. Oh, that's a piece of cake. That wasn't bad at all. Okay, there it is. Okay, now I just gotta get that woodruff key out, hopefully, and get that out. Then we should be able to press that shaft and pull it out uh, through the top. Okay, I've got it supported here on some wood blocks. And I'll just use this punch and I'm going to go straight to the big dog and uh, just try to lightly tap that out. Just kind of give it a good dead blow here. There it goes. There it is. I don't know if you can see. Let's see if we'll zoom in on that shaft. I think it looks like that is just galled up metal. Like it ran out of lubrication. And then the metal just got hot or something. I don't know. Here's the inside of that. Bushing is still there. Okay. Now we'll just clean everything up. And get this polished down. And hopefully get it put back in there so it rides nice and smooth. The good thing is, is this right here is still good. That's not frozen. So I've got this chucked up here in my cordless drill. And I put some tape over this, the end of this shaft. That is where this, this uh, coupling goes on nice and snug. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this down while the drill is on. If I had a lathe, that'd be nice, but I don't have one. So, and I'm just going to use some sandpaper. I'm just going to try to clean, take the diameter of this down just a tiny bit so that then it can ride smoothly. Ooh, just spilled out some WD-40 inside of that guy. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, let's see how that fits. I'll put some WD-40 on this, give me some oil. There we go. That's great. That's nice and tight. That's pretty perfect right there. I think the reason that happened is because at some point someone put a new bushing in here. And I think this is a lubrication hole, but there's no hole. So you can put oil down in here, but there's no way for the oil to get from here into, uh, into this uh, bearing surface. So I think what I'm going to do is just drill a small hole down through that bushing. And uh, I don't know, I think that's what I'm going to do. That just fits nice and snug in there. Then I can just tap that and get a punch mark started so that then when I'm drilling through that uh, uh, bushing material into the inside, I'm not getting uh, my, my drill bits not wandering all over the place. But I do want to have, oh, that's a good punch mark right there. You can see that hole that's right there down inside that bushing now. So now, I don't know if you can see it, you look down inside there. You can also see the hole down in there. So now, if I spray some WD-40 in there, right down inside that hole, there we go. I think that'll work a lot better. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not, but I feel good about it. I've got this advanced mechanism all put back together. Um, cleaned it up pretty good. Um, there was a lot of surface rust and scale and stuff on it, but now everything is smooth. It's pretty pitted, you can still see, but uh, I think it'll work just fine. Now this advanced mechanism inside of this distributor, this is actually one of the advantages of using a distributor over a magneto is because you can actually advance your spark at higher RPMs. Can you see that arrow right there? So that's the way that the, uh, the distributor turns and at high RPMs, these weights come out and then these weights come out, they rotate and come on. There we go. You can see they'll, they'll rotate Jeez, there we go. They'll rotate your uh, your rotor right here and advance it so that then your spark occurs sooner because you're running at a faster RPM. That combustion takes time to occur and so you want your spark to happen sooner uh, before uh, your piston gets to top dead center so that then by the time your piston passes over top dead center is on its way back down, your combustion is taking place and you're pushing your piston all the way back down. Otherwise, if you don't advance your spark, then your piston comes up um, and your spark is always occurring at the same time. And so your piston will meet top dead center and start going back down before, um, before your combustion starts to, to, uh, to go off. And so then you're actually losing some of your power um, on your uh, on your combustion stroke on inside of your engine. So anyway, so yeah, I wanted to show you that. That's that impulse, excuse me, that's the advance mechanism. And on some, on some distributors, I don't know if they do that with John Deere, but you can actually change these springs to looser or tighter springs to change kind of the advance curve of your engine. But 
we're not going to mess around with that. I've got the case all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray it now. Um, I sprayed the inside with just some rust proof uh, uh, paint and primer, just a really, really thin coat. And then I'm just going to spray paint the outside of this green real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and paint. Okay, let that dry and put a couple more coats on it, and then we'll put everything back together. Here we are a day later. Uh, I've got the housing all painted and cleaned up. Now it's just time for some assembly, and then uh, I'll test the uh, I'll test the points and the condenser uh, before I put everything back in. But now I'm just going to reassemble everything. I've got the distributor put back together, kind of reassembled, and I uh, lubed everything. The, uh, the uh, ignition advance um, mechanism down beneath here and everything spins nice and freely and it's looking really good. But before I put the points and the condenser back on, I'm gonna check those. So here's my points right here. The condition of them looks, they look actually in really good shape. Let's see if I can zoom in right there on the points. You can see that the Point surfaces are nice and clean, so I don't question the condition of the points. They should check out just fine, but we'll just double check. So listen in for a beep from my multimeter here when they're closed. Open them up. It shouldn't beep. It should be open. Oops, I opened it too far, which it is. Now, go ahead and check the, con the condenser or the capacitor. So I'll switch my multimeter over here to capacitance and we're looking for anything around 20 to 22 microfarad. That's what an ignition condenser or ignition capacitor should be. So uh, we'll ground it out first, make sure it's drained. Then we'll touch my, oh, you won't be able to see that. Touch the negative here on the case of the condenser. Like I say, we're looking for about 20 to 22 there we go, there's 20. So that's 200 nanofarads, which is equivalent to 0.22 microfarads or 0.20 microfarads. So this should be good too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reassemble everything. I've got the points and the condenser mounted up inside of the distributor here, and I uh, mounted it onto my tester. Now let me show you how I've got it wired up. Here is a photograph, or here is a, a, a wiring diagram for the entire tractor. I will go ahead and I'll put a picture of this at the end of the video for anybody who may want to reference it. And I'll put a, a photograph of this uh, instrument panel wiring diagram as well. You'll notice that this, like I say, it's for the entire tractor, and you'll notice that it is positive ground. So you got your positive on your battery running straight to ground. I've got right here, uh, just a simplified uh, circuit for just the ignition system um, that simplifies things. And I've got, you'll notice that mine is wired up negative ground, just kind of uh, like, a, like a normal or a modern ignition system. So I've got my negative going straight to my chassis ground, which in this case is the frame of my tester. On your tractor, it's the frame of your tractor. My positive is going straight over here to the positive terminal on my coil. The negative terminal on my coil comes over here and it connects to the side terminal on my distributor, which is where the points and the condenser are wired to. So then coming out of the tower of my coil, basically uh, you just go straight into the tower, to the middle terminal on your, on your distributor, and then one and two go straight to your spark plugs. Now it may look like this is an open circuit. However, you gotta remember that your distributor is mounted on the frame of your tractor, or in this case, it's mounted on the frame of my tester. So it is grounded out, as I say here, it's grounded to the chassis, and so it is a complete circuit, and so it should work just fine. I've duplicated that over here. You can see negative terminal on my battery running over here to my chassis, right here to the frame of my tester. My positive, I've just got with this wire right here, and I'm gonna touch it to the positive terminal on my coil, simulating, you know, someone 
turning the key on or turning the ignition switch on. And then my distributor here, one and two, terminals one and two, are connected to these two uh, middle terminals on my spark gap. So I'll go ahead and set up my tripod and then uh, make a video of that. We should, like I say, I've said on other videos, you may not be able to see the spark every single time due to the frame rate of the camera, but you should be able to hear a good clean snap um, that comes from that blue spark when it jumps across that gap. And that gap on this tester is about 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the tester. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn on the ignition by touching this here. There you go. And with the distributor, oops, with the distributor, you can turn the speed down nice and low. Works great. There you go.